welcome to MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Omar and joining me today is Silver Quill. I would roll out, but I'd have to leave my microphone behind. Oh no, could you bring it with you? Do you understand the setup I had to get just to make this work with my computer? No way, Jose. <laughs> also joining us today is Jacob. Hey, everybody. I think Iron Man's about to put a cease and desist on this comic. Who? Me? No. Oh, boy. You'll see later. Oh, uh, boy. Oh, boy. Also joining us today is Tara. Now, you see, I can potentially roll out, but I can't because of the huge tree I have on my back, so that prevents me from rolling. Ah, I see. Wait, don't, if, I don't, if I remember right, don't you have that ability? To make the tree go away? No, 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 roll out. Hey, you know what? I don't think I can learn that move. <laughs> oh, you, just by just by a TM, I'm sure you can. Just forget your most important move, solar beam or whatever it is. What are you? What are you? Uh, what have you been playing lately? <laughs> like I mentioned before. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Norman. Just because he's plant based doesn't mean he has that move. That's that's really florist of you. <laughs> I mean, I just, uh, fun, fun, funny enough, the last. <laughs> the last Pokemon game I played was X and Y. <laughs> this shows you where I was. <clears throat> and <laughs> in today's episode, we are going to review the fourth and final issue of Transformers uh, slash My Little Pony, uh, The Magic of Cybertron. In this issue, we review... Sorry, um, in this issue, Spike, Smolder, and the Dinobots are attacking... Sorry, our attack by King Somers minion and the final battle for the fate of Cybertron begins. So before I head on, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well, I this is a very enjoyable uh, issue, partly because we get the the awesome team up of Spike and Grimlock once again, which is always enjoyable. And then we just get an all out pony Cybertronian battle against. Uh, well, Sombra, and I won't give away more than that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. True, true. All right. Jacob, what about you? Well, I hate to say it, but the first story is really bothering me. I mean, we all agreed that the first Spike and Grimlock story in the previous crossover was great. This time, though, it's a bit annoying, but I'll save it for when we get to the meat of the issue, which isn't much since only Spike and Smolder have it. Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. There are th- uh, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. Yeah, as for the final, as for the fin- for the finale, I also have an issue with that one, but uh, we'll get to it. Right. Tara, please tell me you read this one. I did. I was just saying it to mess with you. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, all right. <laughs> all right. So, what do you think, man? Uh, first impressions. First impressions. Uh, I honest, I too also liked it. Yeah, the first half, um, I, I kind of find it not really necessary. It was more of like a fill-in, like how you see on TV shows with fill-in episodes. It, the mm-hmm. first half kind of feels like a fill-in for the comic to put in a side story or whatnot. But aside from that, I really enjoyed this one. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. And as for me, I like this one. Um, the, the, what, the first one? Uh, oh, man, what's the title? They didn't really put a title on. Uh, let's see. The, the Mighty Dinobots, the, sorry, the Mightiest Dinobots. I, I like that story. Uh, it, it, it just feel good because, uh, you know, I, I'm going to save that part later. I hope you remember. And finale, finale is just awesome. And a bit confusing at parts. I'm not 100% sure if I was utterly confused, but I, I was confused. <clears throat> so anywho, uh, if you have not read this comic... Posture and go do so. <clears throat> I'll come back. So we start off with well, looky looky, uh, it's the Dinobots featuring Grimlock. <laughs> so ah, you just don't even mention the other Dinobots' names. You just say, "Hey, look, it's the Dinobots and Grimlock." <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, Spike even says that Grimlock and the Dinobots. <laughs> do you know the Dinobots' Sounds names? Sounds like a band. <laughs> So I was like, oh, you want the you want all the Dinobot names? Well, I'm pretty sure Norman doesn't know. Nope, I'm not, and I'm not even going to look at the wiki. 
you know I, i'm going to open the wiki <laughs> so why, why, why don't you uh roll, roll out or call out well all right from left to right although we're going to start with the most controversial Ooh. the triceratops one used to be called slag okay but that is a highly offensive term in uh england And so, very, most recently, he's had a name change to Slug. Slug. Then there's Swoop, no offense there. Sludge, which Slug and Sludge getting a little too uh, similar there. And Snarl. Snarl. Okay. All right. So, I mean, it could be Grimlock and the S-Squad. Mm. Okay, Silver, um, I'm mm. on the Dinobot wiki. Uh Uh, sorry, I'm on the Transformers wiki featuring the Dinobot G1, and uh, there's there's a line here. The group members are Grimlock, the leader, Slag, the bad boy. <laughs> They're all the bad boys. Slug, Norman, you just said one. a bad word. You know, I'm just reading. Yeah. I'm just reading from the wiki. Norman, do you have Sweetie Bot on standby? Nope, she's MIA. We got Snarl, the quiet one. And soup, <laughs> sensitive one. When you say they were a band boy, sorry. When you say they were a boy band, you were joking, sir. All right. So apparently, in British slang, slag means a lewd or promiscuous woman. Uh, yeah. And Norman said it with confidence. <laughs> yep, because I was reading a page. Oh boy, <laughs> reading a page. It's on still being like daughter. really, it's still like really stupid decision, like. Slag, like no matter how you put it in the English world, it means like what it is. The rock isn't it? thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is it rock? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like isn't it metal? It's metal waste. Mm-hmm. Oh god. From the from a forging process, unfortunate. Oh wow. Uh, there, there, there is a. Uh, oh, there's a note on this one. Let's see. Uh, slag had, I don't know, slag had, uh, you know, I, I, I don't have that thing in front of me, around, you know, I don't care. So, uh, where was I again? Oh, yes. Boy band. Yes, boy band. So, Grimlock and, uh, the band, <laughs> Grimlock and the bands, oh uh, boy, Grimlock and the boys, uh, are introduced, uh, are introduced to Spike and Smolder. So, um... Smolder here just says, "Oh, is this the guy you were talking about? The big giant dinosaur robot dude that you kind of uh, admire and stuff." And Spike says, "Yeah, I mean, I did, and also I did a bit of research and make a monster story. Yeah, yeah." So Grimlock just says, "Who are you, little small one? You cool?" And Smolder just flies up, brief fires, and shows how awesome she is because she's awesome. And the rest of the boys are like, "Ooh, tiny creature, power!" Even though it's organic, wow. And uh, the rest of the Dinobots ask, "What small one do?" And he kind of downplays himself, but Grimlock tries to really push him. Says, "Do you not see Wing? Spike, fr- uh, friend Spike here can fly too." And Spike just says, "Well, just got them still learning how to fly." And Grimlock just says, "Take time." Uh, he breathe fire too. <laughs> uh, Spike just says, "Mostly for correspondence, <laughs> telecom fire." <laughs> okay, Grim, gotta love you, man. And he do other things. Um. And says Spike says says we weren't sure about that one, and Grimlock just says you helped me before, and Spike is just a good listener, and the rest of the group are not really impressed by Spike because Spike tiny and doesn't do cool stuff like Smolder. Smolder here knows Spike, but sees like oh god, dude, at least trying to impress the boys, like. They're not the popular ones like Grimlock. Like Grimlock came out pretty well, like the rest of us do. Right. <laughs> Until... <clears throat> yeah. So this is where I got the problem with this issue, and it's downgrading Spike for the sake of giving him a moral 
boost. In in the first Grimlock issue, it was fine since uh, well, Spike and Grimlock were basically going up against the combiner that even Grimlock <coughs> alone couldn't beat. So it showed Spike uh, being resourceful and being able to adapt to the situation to win the day. Here, though, it just feels feels off since well. In the show, we've seen him fly just well the moment he got wings. And he just got better in the Father Knows Beast since it was smaller that taught him, you know, taught him to fly properly. As for the fire thing being correspondence only, I call bullshit. Because he's been uh, doing the fire breath thing way before he even got uh, wings on the large scale. Uh, I mean... The, the way I look at it is Spike doesn't really want to um, How do I put it? Spike doesn't really want to Stand out Because he, he doesn't want to Look bad in front of uh, Grimlock and his uh, Gang or the boys Because when you look at it uh, Grimlock is big Awesome and powerful And Spike is just Spike Like he knows his limitation and what he can do so, to compare himself with uh, Smolder, for example, it's kind of not his thing. And he's, the way I look at it, is he, he's just playing down himself. You know, just, eh, no, no, not that, you know, uh, don't, don't, don't look at me. Look away, look away, <laughs> ignore me. I don't know, I don't think Spike <laughs> would go like that, that he just downplay himself. I mean, when, when, honestly speaking, there's multiple versions of Spike. We got Spike, the one where he is boisterous, who is egotistical, and then we got the Spike that is in love with Applejack. Oh, God. Never again. Is he? What? There was that one time when he was obsessed. Which one? You mean the one oh. when she uh, basically pretended to be rarity? No, the one where he was just obsessing over Applejack. Like, oh, Applejack, let oh, me do this for you. Spike the dragon oh. cold. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah Spike at your service. Yep. Yeah, Spike at your service. Yep, so we, we, we don't talk about that. That was one anymore. inflation form too many. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, <clears throat> but anywho, um, should I ask for it? Yeah, I, I, I guess this is a good spot. Um,. Silver, what do you think so far? Well, the weird thing for me is that the other Dinobots are far more articulate than uh, than Grimlock. Yeah. So, I mean, they don't get to say a whole lot, but it just seems like uh, they have a higher IQ than him. <laughs> so that's the, that's the uh, only discrepancy. And yeah, I can see Spike not being able to be all that boisterous when called for. He doesn't want to brag about it. Smolder's more good at the self-hype mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is inherent to dragons. But yeah, this is setting up the moral to, sh to not underestimate Spike or the little guy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But not a lot has happened in this first couple pages. We're about to get to the, the real meat of the story. Mm -hmm. All right. So... Jacob, what, what do you have? I, I guess we kind of know, but just have to ask. Uh, I don't think there's much that can be said at this point. All right. Yeah. Tara, what about you? I am I guess there's nothing really said either. It's like, you know, just pretty much a setup. I also, too, find it a bit odd how Spike is still learning to fly. But it's like, Spike, you, what do you mean? Like, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting too much into this. But as well as that. He could, we saw him breathe fire as well, not just from sending the scripts, but like you also said, he probably just doesn't want to go off be looking like he's trying to show off for everything. But that, that's just my opinion. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So anyway, although we could make us, we could make a song out of this. He's learning to fly, learning to fly, because he just got wings, just got wings. Uh. None of you have heard that song. Sorry, no. Gosh darn, I'm old. Oh, no, no, no. I know the song. I just wasn't expecting you to change up the lyrics. <laughs> and I'm here not really realizing what song is that. Because hey, I was dancing while here. you were singing it. 
Anywho, talking about not realizing it, uh, we 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 see a combiner bot, and oh boy, uh, what's his name? It's Superion. Superion. All right. So Superion comes in and says, "That was pretty pathetic to watch." And at first, I was like, "Wait, what? Who said that?" And we see this big giant robot. And then it's Superion, like I mentioned before. Uh, but then, uh, then he says, but then again, none of you are too impressive. And I was thinking, bitch, who are you to say bad things about Spike? You're an Autobot, you should know better. And things go processing in my mind. Wait, is he mind controlled by someone, bro? Oh, he's and, got a green visor. Ah, so he is. Um, that part of the lore past me. I, I didn't realize when your visor was green, you were mind control. Has it always been that way, Silver? Well, well I mean, there's not a whole... Pony's got green there's eyes. not a whole lot of mind control. Huh. Sorry, Jakob, what, what were you saying? Yeah, I just uh, said that when several mind controls, others, uh, they get green eyes. Huh. Yep, that is a thing in MLP. Uh, oh, yeah, that's also true. Uh, just sure. give just give me a second to double check because I'm trying to double check if it's true. And yes, it's true. It 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 goes for the bots and ponies. All right. <clears throat> so uh, a little detail that I didn't realize. All right. Cool. cool. So um, superior comes in and beats the crap out of the dino bots. <clears throat> Funny enough, uh, Spike here knows. Uh, Superion by name and by type too so oh that's cool uh, he, he did a lot of research on this so that's cool that's cool so <clears throat> Dinobots uh, sorry um, Smolder sorry oh boy uh, Grimlock here just tells Smolder to take Spike away because uh, the Dinobots are going to kick ass and nope they're going to get beaten up like chumps. Yep. Uh, none, none of them are doing much work. They're getting beat up. They're getting stamp, uh, stomp on. Like, they are not cool. So, uh, so Pyrion just drops down Grimlock on s Slag? Nope. Nope, that's not Slag. Uh, That's Snarl. Snarl. Snarl, okay. Uh, drops him on... And you said a bad word again. Yep, said a bad word. Nope, doesn't count. <clears throat> Anywho, uh, drops him on the robot. And uh, <coughs> just says, I'll make an extinction joke. Uh, I'll make an extinction joke, but it's far beneath me as you are. Like, dude, take the opportunity. Don't that... worry, Silver's got you covered. <laughs> but what killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! <laughs> Yee! <laughs> Classic. <clears throat> and before he could do the killing shot, you could say that Superion is a bit hot in the face because he got fire breath by Smolder. Yay! And that shocked him for a bit. And before Smolder can do anything more, gets slapped down for her troubles. Uh, fortunately for her, Spike catches her and <clears throat> comes up with a plan. And you know, Smolder just says, oh no, this is bad. Like He is overpowering every one of us. Uh, this is not good. And Spike just says, Uh, we, this is weird because usually combiners have a hard time keeping it together. Um, and he says that Superior is five Autobots put together. Um, think about the last time you and your friends tried to agree on a pizza topping, uh, then make it um, way more complicated. So Spike here has a plan to, you know what, let's try and confuse them or try to make them not see eye to eye on things by the way silver is this concept true well combiners have varying levels of integration 
Uh, let's do a quick case by case. Uh, Devastator w is pretty simple minded, but the Constructicons all join together. They all have a mutual love of destruction. Mm. But then you go with another group called the Stunticons, which are uh, race cars and demolitions uh, enthusiasts. They're borderline schizophrenic in their combiner mode. Oh, meaning that they don't really see eye to eye? They don't see eye to eye at all. They, they are far too dysfunctional. I mean, as a combiner, they're still dangerous, but they're not fully integrated. Superion is always... Uh, well, it gets along pretty well, but I don't recall his individual components ever fighting the process. The worst of the combiners, or I guess most dangerous, is uh, Preda King, made up of Preda Khans. That is so seamless a uh, uh, joining that he's probably the most effective combiner. And that is the Lion Head one, right? You got All it. Right. And don't the Dinobots trans, uh, combine too? You know, in more recent media they have, but I'm, uh, well, I'll share my thoughts on why I'm glad they didn't here. Oh, okay, because I, I always thought G1 uh, Dinobots do combine to become something bigger because I, I guess it's ingrained in my mindset when you have a team of bots, they combine stuff, you know what I mean? I know what you mean, but like like I say, when when we're talking about this in general, I'll have a lot to share on that regard. All right, then, all right. Then. <clears throat> so, anywho, um, Spike's plan is to break up the band. Oh no! So uh, he goes. Um, he asks Smolder to carry him around so he can just plant seeds of doubts in their head, and uh, just to speed things up. It kind of works because the uh, su because superior on here just breaks down and just the uh, the uh, breaks up breaks up and become normal. By the way, they're all flyers. Explanation, Silver. Well, the well, hmm, boy, when the when the Decepticons made the Stunticons, basically trying to challenge the Autobots for rule of the road. Prime decided that they would counter in the air, so he had the aerial bots created. And there was a there was a bit of a brouhaha about how they were created and how they acted uh, fresh out of the gate. So each one, it, they are basically a squad of fighter jets. And Spike knows them so well that he can actually uh, point out their insecurities. Case in point, uh, their leader, Silverbolt, was actually originally a low-flying fly, low shuttle remodeled to look like an American aircraft. And so he actually has a fear of heights. Oh, really? No. So that's that's got to be an occupational hazard right there. Kind of... Uh, uh, funny enough, we're back to uh, Vector Sigma programming. Vector Sigma makes no mistakes, but it sure gave him one heck of a challenge to overcome. <laughs> okay. But the... Oh, man, how I put this? Because the thing in the back of my mind that's always kind of confusing is that flying-type robots are Decepticons. That's what... Well, that's the... Oh, yeah. That's what's ingrained in my mind. So, uh, having a superior is just a bit confusing because that's not true when uh, it goes further on. Because we had what? Uh, we had. Who's the lady robot? Wingblade. Sorry. Uh, we had Wingblade. We had. Uh, who now? Uh, Jetfire, which is debatable because if I'm not mistaken, he was a seeker, right? Well, oh boy, it depends on which continuity you want to go with. <laughs> ah, yes. God damn it. <sighs> I'm sorry, but there's a, there's a lot of choices, and they've toyed around with it. Mm -hmm. G1 Jetfire was a scientist from before the war. Actually, was a good buddy with Starscream. Uh, until he was lost on Earth during a uh, 
polar storm, probably the ice age again. Funny how that keeps coming up. Mm. In the more recent War for Cybertron, with the really rigid CG, uh, Super, uh, Jetfire was a Seeker, the leader, in fact, before he changed sides and Starscream took over. Yeah, I, I remember so, that, too. So, there are always a few Transformers that muddy the waters on that distinction. The Stundacons are an attempt to rule the road. The aerial bots canter in the air, and the Decepticons take some personal issue with that as they consider the sky their territory. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. That, that too. Oh, boys. And then also, um, there's the one from... Yeah, Star Saber. I don't know how... Oh, Star Saber. I don't know well, how he, canon well, Star Saber is. In Japan, very... He's their, their super robot hero. To be honest, Star Saber's cool. And yet, people in America didn't voted to not make a toy of him. Instead, do another optimal Optimus Primal. Did you... Oh, wow. Um, did you not see the figure of him? You know, I haven't seen a figure of Star Saber just yet. Not here in America. Certainly not in stores. Oh, wow. Um... I am just going to put this in the chat just for people to see because uh, this is awesome. Like, I, <clears throat> I when I was a young lad, I had a toy of Star Saber and I always thought that he was the coolest in the world because he can do stuff. And uh, I even bought the lion upgrade for him and I thought that was the coolest. Because he, he had big guns and whatnot, like, yeah, awesome. And, yeah, that, I always thought that, yeah, that was cool. And why didn't we see him again? And Silver, do, please do check this out and tell me what you think. Let's see here. I also love how you're just going to Silver like he's the Wikipedia Transformers. Technically, he's kind of is. <laughs> Good lord, four hundred and sixty dollars for this bad boy. But it's no wonder I don't see this. But it's eight point three inches. He's a big boy. But that, that well, it's impressive. But uh, I need something a bit more manageable. <laughs> also true. But anywho, <clears throat> where was I again? What was I talking about? Yeah. Um, well, we were going. You were wondering about combiners and their mental yes, states. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, you did explain that. Uh, the most stable one is the Predaking. Yes, but we don't get to see Predaking in this issue. He, or in this series. He appeared in the first issue, right? No. Oh, oh. I, guess, I guess too bad. I don't think we've seen the Predacons at all because I I definitely think, think Fluttershy would be able to tame them. Uh, Everything is tameable by her. <sighs> Anywho, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yes, uh, as they decombine, uh, Grimlock says, wait, do not hurt friend. And uh, one of them just says, oh, Grimlock, what, what happened? My, my processes feel like they're fuzzy. And everybody prays Spike because he saved the day. Yay. And they kind of have a parade for him with the... Uh, what what are they called? Silver uh, Superiors Group, the 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 aerial bots. Aerial bots. All right, <laughs> all right. Uh, with the aerial bots oh. clapping and being confused. Yay. Well, they have every reason to be. I mean, they just got they just got deep brainwashed. Like, what are we doing here? I I guess they they ain't going to fight in the big fight. Nope. <laughs> So, anywho, before I head into the finale, anybody want to say stuff? I'm good. I'm good. Sarah, good. Well, Silver, you good? About, well, I'll say a little bit. I mean, I like, uh, clearly, Spike, both Spike and the writer really did learn the uh, aerial bots personalities and they're very... Uh, disparate views uh 
Let's see here. Slingshot, if I remember right, was really full of himself. And honestly, in the in the G1 cartoon, they really only fleshed out two of the five aerial bots. Mm. So, but also, I really love the artwork for this uh, chapter. Ian, Fl uh, no, KCW Kohler. Mm -hmm. I get the sense really is comfortable drawing the Transformers, but it's also no slouch when it comes to organic shapes like the dragons. Mm -hmm. Really neat. I will also pre hmm? Sorry, Norman? Yeah, I would love to see him try and attempt ponies because yeah, we uh, dragons are in 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 some shape or form are kind of like dinobots and whatnot, except more rounded. So I, I would really like to see ponies. Like, how, how does he handle ponies and whatnot? Equines, to be exact. <clears throat> I also appreciate in the uh, full-page spread where Superion is fighting all five dinobots at once, oh, yeah. uh, there's a slight homage to the movie. Oh? Uh, you look at the... the a Patasaurus, uh sludge mm -hmm. with a long neck, mm -hmm. and his eyes are popping out. Yeah, I noticed that. They did that in the movie too when Devastator delivered a pretty powerful pile driver. Really, no. And, and it was one of the few times where there was a bit of silly cartoon in the midst of them killing all my favorite characters, <laughs> and. And causing no shortage of childhood trauma as these retired toys are getting blown up. I'm not bitter. <laughs> I'm just wounded. <laughs> it's okay, Silver. The big bad. Now, uh. <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. Now, Norman, you asked about why the Dinobots weren't able to combine early on. And it was sort of this theme of escalation in the toy. In the toys and also uh well how should i put it part of it part of the reason is simply because they adopted toys from the diaclone line that didn't combine at the time oh um and that is the original japan thing yes diaclone was the original series that uh created the designs for most of the early transformers which were really supposed to just be vehicles piloted by humans. Mm. Th that's why a lot of the toys had these weird ports for a, f a driver to sit in, but of course came with no driver. I remember the sludge toy. He uh, There was this panel on his back that flipped out and looked like a seat, but there was never anyone to sit there. Mm. But here's the here's how I view it. It's all about escalation. You got the Autobots and the Decepticons, and the Autobots aren't fighters. They, they weren't made for war. So they f find out about the di dinosaurs, and they make their own Dinobots. Dinobots kick all kinds of ass for a while and are pretty much a big headache for the uh, Decepticons. So they try to counter by escalating with Combiners. Then the Autobots make their own combiner, that's Superion, mm -hmm. and then there are a whole bunch of combining teams. But the Dinobots were the first step in an escalation of the war that would eventually reach building city-sized Transformers. And this was G1, right? Not talking about the, what you call this, uh, Titans? The Seekers? Not Seekers, the... Uh, what, what, what were they called? Those city Transformers? They were called Titans, but that's only a more recent, uh, more recent title for them. Uh, all right. At the time, that well, there were only two, <clears throat> and we never, and we never really got where they came from, unless you lived in Japan. Mm. Then they had a whole TV special devoted to building them. Oh, really? No, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, Boy, I am getting really far down the rabbit hole on this one. Torterra and y Yaka are probably like, good God, is he ever going to shut up? No, don't. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm just like sitting back here like, oh, ain't that cute that these two are talking so much about Transformers and I don't know a lot, just the usual yeah. stuff. 
we're talking shop, but I'm I'm dominating the conversation. Let us go forth into the final chapter. And don't 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 apologize, Silver, because here's the thing: hearing somebody talk passionately about what they know is fun. They they know they speak them from the heart, and it's always fascinating to listen to it because hey, this guy knows his <laughs> thing. What does what else does he know? Until we go, until it goes on for hours, and you're like, good. God, kill me now. <laughs> Take me away from this transforming nightmare. People who listen to this podcast knows what they're getting into. Oh, I don't... I mean, I'm not sure you know what you're getting into when you hi, have me come on. I do. Fun times and headaches. <laughs> <laughs> and, and wheels. <laughs> and, and, and puns. Uh, any. Lots of puns. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Anywho, let's get on to the second story and the final one. So, <coughs> in the final one, we see Optimus Prime perving on the captured friends. Uh, it seems that they're trying to dig something out. Uh, they follow their uh, mind brain control comrades and they see that, oh, um, they're digging something out. And whatever they're digging out is not good. And... They call for reinforcements and whatnot, but they have to go in now because if they linger any longer, they might have, they might be too late. And we see a panel where, in all honesty, I feel like this panel is bad because of the force field that is around them or whatever it is. Because <sighs> this also moment is. Being tinted by an orange shield, and silver. Who's on? Who's who's on page right now? Because I do know Bumblebee. I do know Prime. I do know the Bumblebee clone, the red one. Oh! Oh! Wow! The Bumblebee clone. <gasps> How could you? Well, that's why it says on the toy. <laughs> Well, that okay. So let's go left to right once again. Way in the back, the guy projecting the in- inconvenient force field bubble is Trailbreaker. Oh, Trailbreaker! All right. Then the guy with the mis- missile on his shoulder is Mirage. The aforementioned Bumblebee and Optimus, and then Cliff Jumper. Yeah, this is his name. All right. And then Prime's main squeeze, Alita One. Ah, oh, that's Alita One. Yep. If I'm not mistaken, is it Battle she's Angel all... Alita? No, I don't think so. No, she doesn't have eyes that big. <clears throat> yeah, I... if I'm not mistaken, Alita One wasn't. It's a new edition, was she? She was in G One for an episode, uh, and then marketing says, "You boys shouldn't be playing with girl robots. That's disgusting." We should put them with other boy robots. You know, I wonder if that wasn't uh, some of the logic. They never made a toy for her back in the day. One episode. But um, I, I did see her in the newer rendition where she stayed back to kind of help the resistance. I remember, I remember that, at least. <clears throat> yeah, and boy, things went badly for them. Mm-hmm. But anywho, uh, we continue on and we see uh, them fighting it out and just trying to stabilize stuff and try not to hurt the ponies and so on. Uh, they're, they're trying to neutralize the threat without killing. So, okay, that's going to be something new for them. And uh, they, they f- oh, I don't know, neutralize without killing is actually rather common in the 80s. You just... You fire your gun and you don't hit squat. True. I thought that only happened with stormtroopers. Also true. Well, the Autobots apparently went to the same shooting range as stormtroopers. <laughs> even though they're bigger targets. Hmm. So, <clears throat> so anywho, um, Prime tells Mirage to cast... No, <laughs> cast... No, uh... To disrupt the spell so that they won't get brainwashed, and we we see uh, Alita One uh, beat up some robots. We see Bumblebee getting pounded by Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie, 
And yeah, we, we see that they're too late because Sombra gets into or smokes into the ground and unearths Scorpionox. Or in his word, King Sombranox. Yay. King Sombranox? <laughs> Some, that's what he says, man. I, I ain't making. I, this time, I'm not making anything up. And isn't Scorpion knock from Beast Wars? Or is that two completely different? Hey, that's so what, please go because yeah, because oh. I was gonna say too. When I when I was first reading this comic, and I, they like Scorpion knock, I'm like, I thought Scorpion uh, knock was from Beast Wars. Okay, be, before Silver goes off, I, I'll I'll say this. When I was a young, <laughs> sorry, whenever I just say that, it just makes me giggle. Sorry, when I was a young in. I had a toy of him. What do you mean, was? <laughs> what? Was? You mean I still am? Yay. Uh, yeah, 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 you don't remember the G1. I was surrounded by kids. <laughs> you see, back but in anyway. my days. <laughs> but, but anyway, I, 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 I did have a toy of him. And he was the coolest. He was big. He was awesome. He was badass. Now I'm trying to remember why to keep him. Damn times. Oh, boy. But... Oh yeah, they they reused a lot of names in Beast Wars. Uh, so yeah, there was a city-sized transformer, the uh, Scorpionok, which we're seeing in this comic. Then kind of a downgrade for the name to Megatron's bootlicker, uh, and low intelligent second in command, also Scorpionok. <coughs> But uh but they're like, Meh, these kids, they don't know us they don't know a scorpion out from a quick strike. Mm. Meh But if I'm not mistaken <laughs> I say But if I'm not mistaken, uh he is pretty badass in the lineup, right? Like he is kind of an ambitious leader, right? Well, in both America and Japan he sought to take over <coughs> rule of the Decepticons away from then Galvatron. Mm. Also, he was a head morpher thing. Was a head morpher thing? I love it. Uh, they called them headmasters, yeah. which these days, if you've had a college experience, you can't help but giggle. Tee <laughs> tee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, I'm just relooking at him, and he is just badass man. Like I don't remember why I got him or visionary. No, headmasters. Yeah, I got it because Hitmaster's toys were the coolest. Yeah. Still. I, I, I remember getting him. He was fun. He was big. He was clunky, to say the least. Actually, while we're on the topic of being old and whatnot, I'm also going a bit off track here, but I feel like I should also say this. Uh, what was it? One time uh, at my job, one person mm. was talking about the movie Citizen Kane. And then oh, I come in going, oh, yeah, I've seen that movie. And he looks at me like, you're so young. How do you know about that movie? It's like, funny story. You see, I'm friends with this guy on the internet that recommended <laughs> me to watch this movie. <laughs> oh, Tara, you're showing your age. <laughs> and you're showing my impact on everybody, which I appreciate. Yay. I'm old and I tell everyone what to do. <laughs> Man, get to work, you punks. <laughs> oh, boy. So, um, where were we again? Are Scorpionox we yes. being awesome? Scorpionox. Scorpionox King Sombranox. King so it's a Sombrock night for us. It's a Sombrock life for us. Uh, I, I, I can never get the Austin Powers thing in, out of my head. <laughs> wakey, wakey, world. Okay. H to the Izzer, B to the Vizzer. <laughs> the fact that you can remember that is just awesome. Anywho, carrying on because Sombrero is inside Scorpionox and he is wow. Um, this this is bad. This this is bad for everyone. We already talked about how ambitious and badass Scorpionox is. Uh, having him being controlled by Sombrero is bad. By the way, Silver, why is he underground? And what did he mention about him being controlled or the controller being gone and stuff, and him being a titan? Well, let's see here. I don't know why Scorpionok is buried underground, only that in this odd blend of pretty much every Transformers franchise, everyone's got to be somewhere. 
But since there's no headmaster component, I guess it's a body without a mind, which is perfect for Sombra. Well, makes sense. Makes sense that um, body of mind. Okay, cool, 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 cool. But I, I also just described most of my, our politicians. Diggity. Yay. Well, they're motivated by money. Yeah, but a body without a mind. Uh, but was he ever a titan? Well, technically, he is a city-sized transformer, and they therefore, I think that's the only criteria to be a titan. I guess. I guess. So, anywho, um, carrying on. Uh, he comes out, he threatens everyone, but wait, we see our heroes! And Jake, uh, Jacob just posted something awesome, and it's it's a pony with a flaming guitar riding on a boombox being carried by a UFO. You mean Octavia? Yes. Yeah, that's Octavia sitting on, on the top of. Uh, I I I, Sam's, I know I know I'm, I'm just I'm just. Although I'm not sure who the UFO is. <clears throat> so you see Silver uh, Soundwave the the does exist in other in other uh, issues except for the third one. Well, that's good. Octavia apparently found her spine. <laughs> I mean, before she was like, the only practical thing is to hide and go back to Equestria. Nope. Now she's guitar. Well, no, she's her cello's on fire. Yeah. She's like that ge- that guy Fury in uh, Mad Max Ro- Fury Road. <laughs> I know. And for the record, and for the record, that UFO is named Cosmos. Cosmos. Um, Audubon. Oh no, not that Cosmos. Oh no, wait, she's uh, stuck on the moon. Oh. This one. What? Oh, the... Nope. Different different Cosmos. Uh, has more confidence issues than than uh, the Cosmos of Pony Comics. Uh, look, looking at it right now on the wiki page, he, uh, uh, he, she, it, they... Yeah. He, theoretically. Uh, they don't look good because... Uh, from what I can see here, they, they play him as a joke. He looks well, like a dwarf. A... He looks like a dwarf. Well, he is a one of the small ones. At, uh, what, what were they called? I forget the exact term. They weren't spy masters or anything, but they were just microbots. Oh. So yeah, his, his shtick is that he does a lot of deep space work and is often lonely and feels very put upon. Mm. So yeah, being micro looking like a dwarf, that I think that's part of the insecurity. I see. Technically, I, I, I can see them changing his personality in the modern age to be a grumpy old man that wants to be left alone. And being small like a dwarf makes him dangerous because his weapon is a warhammer. <laughs> I mean, it works, right? <laughs> Maybe. <clears throat> but anywho, we see this awesome display of awesomeness. Like, the flaming guitar, or the flaming cello. That, honestly, that looks like a guitar, man. But anywho, the flaming cello is just overkill. <laughs> well, I'm just, all I'm thinking of is Fury Road right I now. I know! Spray silver spray on lips and say, witness me. And... <laughs> uh, and what was his name? Uh, bad guy. King bad guy just says, disappointing. <laughs> oh, mediocre. Mediocre. <laughs> so, anywho, yeah, backup comes in. Uh, Sombrero just tells the slaves to uh, stop them at all costs because he needs to work the body of the robot. <clears throat> so, we, we see the ponies um, kicking ass, saving lives and whatnot, and... <clears throat> Not sound wave, but shock, shock wave. wave. Uh, shock wave, uh, catching the ponies and them getting rid of the mind control aspect, and we see that <clears throat> things are going along pretty well. But we are shown that hey, if toys were sell, uh, sorry, if toys were being sold, here's what you could possibly buy because. 
Our ponies change into weapons. Wait, what? Yeah, this is the complaint that I was gonna have uh, later down the line. This just comes out of nowhere, like Iron Man suits that make ponies transform? What? Uh, uh, <laughs> see. And yet, I, I will not lie, if, if Hasbro did make toys of these, I would get yep, them. See, we, we got a sale here. <laughs> what I say is true. <laughs> no, but... Uh, Although, how the, how their bodies contort into these shapes is a whole other Chris McClary. Yes, I too well, wonder what happened with their bones and everything. No, no, see, he, 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 did you guys... Uh, did you guys play Metroid starring Simon Saran? No, oh, where she turns into a ball. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, that's that's just assume the fetal position. <laughs> no, no, she, this she, is she, when, we, when she does that, uh, she gets teleported away. So, assuming this is the same thing, I don't know. I mean, Rarity flattening out into a shield, and by God, Applejack becoming a hammer. <laughs> oh, where does her hat go? Is the hat part of the hammer uh, shield? No, no. no. Hasbro doesn't want to make hats, so the, the hat is put off screen. It's no fair. <laughs> uh, but, but yes, um, we, we see this, and it's just that, what? Like, uh, what? Oh, but I have to pre- I have to mention something previously, because uh, we see some banter between Rainbow Dash and Starscream, saying that uh, she can put more dense... Uh, than he can, and he's saying challenge accepted. So uh, it seems that Starscream ain't that big of a dick yet, I guess. So yay. <laughs> Give him five minutes. Oh, yeah, true that. <sighs> but anywho, um, R- RC just says, uh, mute yourself, Shockwave. Time to pony up and kick some tail. <laughs> and she just asking Applejack, um, do you do you say do, do you all say stuff like that? <laughs> I just find that very okay. That's cool. That's cool. So uh, we see Bumblebee needs help, and Spike is on the way because he turns himself into a blaster and shoots fire, which somehow miraculously breaks the spell cast, uh, the mind control element. What? So. Well, it's but. Be- Better than the movie where he just lit a guy on fire. For kids. I guess. I guess. No, um... Uh, so, I, I can understand why Jacob feels the way he feels with the aspect of... Wait, put on suit, become robots? Wait, what? And the transformation doesn't even make sense. What? Like, I, I think we we should have had at least one uh, issue separate talking about, well, this whole concept. Or, or at least this set it up. It just comes out of nowhere. Yeah, or at least set it up. Yeah, I do agree with that one. I do agree with that one. Because, like, what you mentioned, Jacob, it came out of nowhere and there was a lot of, what? What? And I can see them selling toys of this. Like, yeah, if there were toys of this, the people would buy it. You, you, and if I would, you, you you got a Applejack hammer, Rarity shield, Rainbow Dash, Battle Axe. I'm guessing it's Battle Axe. And then you got a Spike yep. flamethrower. They will sell for kids. Wow. Well, uh, what a, what about Pinkie Pie? What does she transform into? Give us a Green second. Pie? Well, give us a second. No, 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 we, no, we'll, no, we'll, no, we'll, no. We'll get there. No. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> so, anywho, um, the weapons are kind of special. Uh, they're non-violent. Okay, uh, that, that, that is bullcrap. Uh, they're very violent, but cartoonish violent, cartoonishly violent. Because whoever gets attacked by the weapon gets un- mind control. Because we see RC hitting, in the, hitting some bots in the head. And Shockwave here goes in to take out Twilight. But got get spotted. So uh, Rarity just says, "Go in. Let me uh, 
give Twilight some time to reflect as she goes in to show her how mind control is not looking good for her. <clears throat> so she gets uh, on mind control and we get to the finale where Optimus Prime fights Megatron. Battle of the Ages. Starscream just comes in and hits Megatron with a Rainbow Dash. Yep. With the rainbow. Oh, wow. Could you just imagine if that happened? If that really happened, man? Well, I, I mean, the sound effect kind of implies that it does. Wow. There, there, oh, man. But like, I'm just thinking about a sonic rainbow where Starscream hits it and then like... Ah, man. I'm just imagining Ryan Hart's hammer with the jet thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and it's like... Could you just imagine him swinging it and then there's a jet thing and then it goes really fast and it hits. There's a ring, uh, a rainbow ring that hits with a sonic rainbow kind of thing. That would be cool. <clears throat> Hammer down! Boom! Then you got that sonic rainbow ring. <laughs> Awesomeness. Rainbows make you smile. Yep. So anywho... <laughs> Uh, we, we move on. We see that, okay, uh, Ratchet got stuff and they need to get in fast because if not, um, Sombrero is going to understand how to work the system. Um, we see Pinkie Pie getting into an armor. We see Fluttershy getting her own armor. And Megatron questioning Optimus Prime about, uh, is this going to work? And Prime just says, you and me were friends before. So it should work. And they all go in and attack and whatnot. And yeah, uh, it seems that uh, Prime and Megatron goes in. Uh, Twilight turns into a sword, which is awesome. And Megatron gets Pinkie Pie, which is... <laughs> which is a party cannon. Yep, yep. It shoots out rubber, chicken and cupcakes. Megatron is seething at this, like, oh, Optimus Prime gets a cool sword. I get this, whatever this is. Ah! This is frustrating. With a pinky tail coming out the back. <laughs> yeah, frustrating for him. Uh, so it seems to be working, and uh, Sombra couldn't control it anymore, and Scorponak just goes boom. And the day is saved once again by the ponies. Yay. Well, don't wonder what happens to Sombra after this. Captured back. A fair question. Captured back, locked into stone and for, for, uh, forever forgotten. No, he's um, he's a truly mess. Uh, I believe he is a vegetable. Oh, that's not good. Oh, the, well, I mean, it depends. Every time they blow him up, he keeps coming back, so... You know, put him, put him in a little home. Have someone wipe his chin every now and again. Oh, this got dark. <laughs> no. Anyway, let's lighten things up by Megatron trying to kill Starscream. <laughs> could, could you explain this to me? Because I'm a bit confused. Why? I think you, I think you overheard what Starscream said to him when he used it over. Um... We start some huge Megatron with the Rainbow Dash weapon. If anyone gets to blast Megatron, it's going to be me! Yep. <laughs> uh, I, I guess, I guess. Yeah, but no, he... Oh god, you know what. Uh, and somehow please... Ponies... Sorry? It says, The pony spell channels your thoughts, fool. Including your hope that a bit of overkill would magically make me go offline. <laughs> so, so what I was saying, oh, okay. So basically, Starscream didn't need to hit that hard. <laughs> no, he was just trying to <laughs> yeah. kill him and make it look like an accident. Uh, so wait, Silver, but by me saying that, oh, that was that. Uh, if was there were jet rocket coming out. Uh, hit me with a Sonic Rainbow, that'd be cool. That means I was trying to, I was planning to kill Megatron. Well, I mean, who hasn't plotted to kill Megatron at some point? That's true. 
You're just getting in on the trend a little late. I, I guess, I guess, I guess. So, anywho, uh, we move on to the next page where the ponies are going to be sent back to Equestria. And we see Sombra, which is a, who, which is in a vegetable state. Yep, so he... he, he and a cage. Uh, that's important. Really? I, is it a guy who can turn into smoke? If he's just sort of drooling right now, if he's really brain dead, yeah, I guess. I don't, I don't trust that cage. But anywho, uh, we see that um, uh, Prime just says, sorry, uh, this is the second time we had uh, you guys to help stop our mess and whatnot. And Twilight just says, if you guys want to talk and whatnot, well, why not just open line of communication and be the, what you would call this, uh, uh, friendship, uh, be diplomatical about it. I, I think that's was Twilight's word in short. Mm -hmm. And Megatron says, you know what, that, that's cool. I, I, I guess we can. Uh, I mean, it's not my cup of energon, but if the others want it, yeah, so, so. I mean, it shows a bit of flexibility on him. At least he's willing to, uh, willing to open up to the idea, which is cool. Hmm. And with that, sorry. And then, hmm. well, one, one last panel. Yes. Uh, we, we see the ponies hugging Megatron. Aw, that's cute. But why is it green, Silver? Because it's on a monitor, which apparently is in night vision. And who's spying on them? Uh, are, are we going down the rabbit hole again? I think he again? is trying to, uh, Silver. <laughs> I mean... Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a five-faced being called a quintesson. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, let, let's let's but, let's not get deep into the rabbit hole. But I do remember them from the movie. Was it? Yep. <clears throat> well, the movie and then the third season. Oh yeah. And there's a word at the last panel. The end for now. And I got so excited when I saw this and thought to myself, "Yay! I can't wait for the third series." And remember that, wait, didn't IDW just drop a few Hasbro brands? Did they drop Transformers? And they did. They lost the rights. Yep, they lost the rights to Transformers. Did they lost it or did they just let it go? I think they lost really? it. <clears throat> so, unfortunately, for now is forever. Not really, Silver, because uh, previously mentioned... Uh, in the Patreon special, I think, is that they could work together in some sort of capacity in the future with another company that might take the Transformers brand? Do you know? Well, I forget who's got Transformers now. I think, did Marvel get the, get it back? Oh, that's huh. a good question. But anyway, um, with that comic ends and a possible third issue is going to be really, really hard now since IDW doesn't really have the license to print the characters for this. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that's it. So anyway, um, let's go for final thoughts. Silver. Well, I thought it, the climax is a lot of fun. Uh, just from seeing all the characters interact, I, the physics of how these he, how these ponies are transforming into weapons is a fair question. Of course, the headmasters were at one time humanoid uh, aliens, so it's like, how do they contort to form the head? There's a point where you just got where you either get into the story and just let it go, or the story can't grip you, and therefore the uh, interaction or the physics is just too much to ignore. Also, I neglected to name to mention one thing about the Spike uh, and Dinobots oh. issue. 
Spike's now taken out a combiner from the Decepticons and a combiner from the Autobots. And I did a little digging to see uh, if there was ever like a neutral party combiner. Turns out there was. Nexus Prime of the original 13 Primes. So I'm saying he's, he better watch his back. Spike's got a two and two record. Mm, Nexus Prime. Give me a second because name sounds awesome. Well, I guess two and, two and oh record. Yeah, two oh. Like uh, Spike's going to go evil, man. And the next up is going to be this Nexus Prime thingy. Uh, more like Spike is destroyer of combiners. Yep. Uh, this Nexus Prime is uh, something new? Uh, he's been a bit more recent. Part of the IDW line, as far as I know. Uh, oh, that's that's interesting. Does that mean whichever company that's taking over doesn't have the right to use Nexus Prime? Uh, well, Hasbro has the ultimate rights. So as long as they give those rights, you can use them, I bet. Mm, okay, okay. Oh, he was a toy. I think so. Hmm. Anywho, um, anything more to add, Silver? Just that I wouldn't be upset at wielding the party cannon, Pinkie Pie. You you wouldn't lack for desserts at a party. True that. But you have, but, but the the Twilight sword was kind of cool. It looks like. It looks like a crappy sword. <laughs> just, just wondering where where the blade came out of. <laughs> I think it's best not to question it. <laughs> I agree. Moving on. <laughs> Jacob, what about you, man? Well, uh, I don't know what to say. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Well, honestly, uh, for the for the for the finale, this uh, suddenly tr transformation suit sort of put me off a little bit. And as, as I said earlier, I think one of the issues prior should have been used to establish this, which is weird because in the in the third issue that we reviewed the rarity and the what was that red cars. Uh, uh... Oh, a knockout. Yeah. When, the, when they were basically trying to figure out how to, well, basically uh, negate Sombra's mind control. And, well, that's basically where it all stopped, unfortunately. And in the meantime, we had, like, two, two stories that literally... Well, okay, maybe one, but... Uh, I'm... I just really don't like those stories because they really don't add anything to the whole story of the crossover, honestly. And I, I think it pretty much uh, dragged down the the story as a whole. Well, I wouldn't say that, uh, it's all bad, but it sort of feels like a waste, honestly. I I, I understand. I can understand. I I can dig it. And it, 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 how do you put this? It's one of those things where the book itself or, or the comic itself is trying to play it uh, lighthearted, uh, lighthearted, because uh, for h how do you combine two stories from two separate IPs that have two different tones? And if you go too hardcore with what Transformers is doing, it doesn't match with the ponies. And if you to go to if you go to like heartedness, and, and I, I guess that's what they did. It, it it felt like they didn't really. I, I don't know. I mean, to say that they didn't really use the Transformers well here, it does. I I've done, don't feel that no, way. I, it, it's not like that. I mean. If you look at it, the issue... Wait, what was uh, in that guy's name again? Uh, knockout, yeah. Knockout and rarity issue. Well, it wasn't really so uh, out of place that the two couldn't exist in the same uh, crossover. It's the it's the stories that basically well, don't contribute anything to the plot and they're just there. Yeah, I and guess. Based, unfortunately, the... 
the stories that Sam and Megs wrote are basically the prime example of what you really shouldn't do, honestly. I guess, but it's one of those things where you want to have something lighthearted while still carrying a story. And I, I do understand what you mean, because first issue we get the setup, okay? And then the second part was, oh, Aunt Holly Day and Aunt Holly, all right. Second issue was the setup where Starscream and the Seekers were trying to free more robots, I, I guess. Robots and ponies. And then Applejack got lost. Yeah. Third issue was uh, Knockout freeing stuff. And I, there, there's a bit of setup trying to learn how to integrate magic with tech. I guess that's what they were doing. Yeah. And the second part was... Oh, boy. Uh, what was the second part? Soundwave. Yeah, sound... No, first was Soundwave. Then, yeah. Oh, boy. Yes. How, how did I forget about that one? <clears throat> oh, also, I think we missed one continuity hiccup. Mm-hmm. Twilight asked Rarity, how long was oh. I out? 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that one. God oh. dang it. Like... Wait, what? All of this ha- all of this happened within the span of 20 minutes. I mean, if you read the comic, it's 20 minutes. Oh, and for all we know, Rarity could have been saying that just so Twilight wouldn't feel bad. <laughs> Probably. But it's... Okay. Uh, if I feel like there's... Uh, I feel like there's canon stories and there are non-canon stories. And what I mean by that is that there are certain situations where... For example... Uh, the intro for the book is canon. Uh, and Holly and, and Holiday, probably not canon. Uh, the Seekers uh, trying to free some bots. That's probably canon. Uh, the second part to that one was non-canon. Because how did Applejack got lost? That's strange. And the third one, um, I'm guessing... Ah, oh boy. Uh, I'm guessing Soundwave was not canon because he was an idiot. And <laughs> the second part of was... Uh, the second part was, yeah, Rarity and... that That's... Would you consider that canon, Silver? Well, yeah, it has to be because that's how they figure out how to unbrainwash everybody. All right. So, yeah. So, it's one of those things where canon on canon, canon on canon, canon on canon kind of deal where the first part was okay this is contributing to the storyline the second part is just something fun we have an idea let's see how it works <clears throat> yeah but then you get the first story in the fourth issue with Greenlock and the Dinobots and where does that stand? non-canon okay it's just a fun story somebody had with a fun idea yeah, but most of them are still connected to what's going on with, uh, at the very moment. Like, there's some sense of urgency. When you, when you really take a look at it, like, them hanging out with the Dinobots, like, re- not really rushing is like, oh, okay. Then, but, I, I don't know how to say this. Like, it feels like, yeah, I, I get what you mean. And it kind of breaks the flow because when Rarity just says 20 minutes, I feel like, bitch, <laughs> please. <laughs> but at the same time too, Applejack wandering around in the desert with stuff like, how does that even happen? And she got lost? Very carefully. Sorry? Just very carefully. <laughs> Yeah, but like, how how does that even happen? I mean, oh god! I mean, yes, I I, I do understand the frustration with uh, how the story could have been done better and whatnot. But oh well. I think honestly, you get this kind of disconnect from the main plot if the writer doesn't really care about continuity. Or and Sam Max is one of those kind of people. But but I feel like. If somebody has an awesome idea, run with it. And the Dinobots was 
one of them oh well anything to add Jacob yes, I don't think there's anything more to add I mean it wasn't to uh, the crossover wasn't bad but there's like moments like this where the, I don't know it just makes you want to skip certain issues ah okay I mean, I mean there's certain stories anyway ah, okay okay and Tara, what about you? Oh, I, I really like this. Like, like again, I find the beginning half of it like a filler. It's like you know, hey, we gotta fill in the pages somehow. Let's put this uh, this part in. But later on, it I, it was very enjoyable with the action sequences and uh, Scorpion not coming out possessed by Sombra. And I still question about how the ponies are able to transform while not being in pain. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, we 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 just don't question it. <laughs> but I, aside from that, this was a really good comic, and it leaves you on a cliffhanger on ooh, something else is going to happen now, if it will happen or not. <laughs> yeah, t t totally agree on that one, and makes you want to. Hey, I want more of this. Exactly. Ah, oh, boys. So anywho, um, with that I go uh, with me, yeah, yeah. I I have to chime in. I like comic. Comic was fun and good. Uh, like the Dinobot story, art was awesome. Uh, I like the finale. The finale was confusing at points. Um, and by that I mean, how does Pony transform into weapons? Are they going to bring that tech back to Equestria? If they do, a lot of things will be questioned. And yeah, um, can't wait to see a part three if there is a part three. Uh, and that, um, let's end it here. <clears throat> Where's the script? All right, here you go. Uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at Gmail. At dmbsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters at DMBS Show. And my personal Twitter account is at Roman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, look for me on YouTube, Twitter, and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. That's also where you can find links to my Patreon and Kofi uh, to support my videos and my weekday puns. Yay, those are fun. And if there's a new comic, you can find me posting a review on Equestria Daily. All right, all right. Uh, Jacob, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on the DeviantArt under the username Yakafon Podcast, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Thermal Rising, you can find it on filmfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the Tales of the Ashes dot com. Awesome, awesome. And Terra, what about you, man? Well, the good people can find me on the Twitter, the DeviantArt, or YouTube, or Patreon, all under the name Torterra one three two four. Awesome, awesome. Uh, and also, please subscribe to Radio on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive dot com. Links will be in the show notes. And if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review discussion podcast. Reviews and discussions. Sorry, that, that was wrong. Um, early access to review and discussion podcast. Exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank you, Jacob, Lucky Knight, myself, Lag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. I'm Jacob. And I am the Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. Bye bye. That was a fun and transforming read. Yes, but now we gotta practice on our rolling skills because we gotta roll out one day. That's right, so tell all our one big party. So, so what you're saying is that we need to keep rolling, rolling, rolling?
or get wheelchairs. Soonish. When well, I'm not. Older. I'm not that old. I am. Yeah.